One eight. Time to introduce the new cultaholic heavyweight champion of the world, Jack the Jobber, Jack G. King. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you very much. That was a lovely introduction. Well, it's, it's one that you deserve. Um, how's, <laughs> how's it feel? You've got the belt around your waist now. Um, not not currently, but I, I do often. <laughs> Walk around the streets of Newcastle and Gates there be like, yeah, I am the man. I am the man oh, again. Um, well, first first things first, um, WrestleMania 34. How, how crazy was that? Um, I guess it was it was a very eventful show, wasn't it? Like, mm. lots of stuff happened. John Cena and The Undertaker, um, Oscar losing his streak, another controversially received main event. Mm. Um, I think it was a... a a good but weird show, like a mixed show. I think a, a lot of people got agreed online. A lot of people said, "Oh, it was okay," um, but a lot of weird stuff happened as well. Mm. I'd agree with that. But I enjoyed watching it. Um, I think also Takeover was phenomenal, like on a different level. Mm. It was amazing. It, it definitely was. It was also the first WrestleMania you've uh, seen over on this side of the pond for the first time in two years after Orlando and Dallas. Did it make a? Was it a huge difference for you uh, to not seeing it live for the first time in a while? Yeah, it was um, it was disappointing. We we sort of knew because of like the financial limitations right now of the company being quite new mm. and that sort of thing that we probably weren't going to get a chance to go over. But um, I was fine with that. And then I started seeing like photos of New Orleans, and it looks like an amazing city. I've never been before. Mm. Um, it looks amazing. So I was a little bit I was a little bit sad about that. But at the same time, I couldn't be too downtrodden about it because. I mean, I'd gone the previous two years, and it was an amazing opportunity. So um, it was okay, and um, I didn't mind. Obviously, as you can tell from our reactions video, we started a, we started a laugh watching it. So it's all good. We'll come come back to wrestling in a bit. Um, where, where did it all begin for you? Where, where did Jack G King decide I want to be a YouTuber and I want to make a thing about wrestling? Um, <clears throat> kind of by accident, really, because um, all through school I was. Uh, and English, like English was my favourite subject, mm. stuff like that. And then I did that at university, and then I graduated, and um, I was just applying for different writing jobs. And I applied for one uh, on a website, and it was I, I'd never heard of um, of what culture before I joined, but because it didn't really have a um, a YouTube channel then, really. Mm. Yeah. Um, but I joined What Culture as a writer. They happened to be based in Newcastle, where I live. And they happened also to have a wrestling section. And I was like, well, I, you know, I used to be a wrestling fan and I kind of am back into it now. Like, I'd kind of fallen off and got back into it and stuff. Mm. Um, and I had to relearn quite a lot as I was writing and stuff. This was like, this was in late 2014. Mm. And then I um, did a trial and then I went, I went somewhere else because they offered me a little bit more. It was like Hayes Travel, like a travel agent writing brochures yeah. and then I came back because I thought I'm not really enjoying this too much I'll see if I can join Walk Culture again and they were like yeah come, come along so I joined Walk Culture um, and then they you know then Sam was already there and Ross was already there and then they started hiring the other guys that would become like you know like the, the other presenters the faces of the channel mm. um, so it was all it was all kind of by accident then in early January 2016 um, I'd been writing there for about a year. But Chi got ill, and um, he's fine now. But he was ill for quite—he was away for quite a while. Yeah. And they needed someone else to fill in for him on camera and stuff. So that's when me and Ross first started on camera. I didn't think I was very good at first. Luckily, it's a skill. I think you can learn to a degree. So it all kind of took off from there, and then that's sort of how it happened. It's been a quite a, like a series of coincidences, really. Mm. So I do feel very lucky, but at the same time, like. I feel like I've worked quite hard for it as well. What inspires you to, um, again, get into English, and, and what inspires you to be a writer? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, I think I um, I enjoyed, when, I remember when I was younger, I enjoyed writing something and for someone to read it and go, oh, that's cool, because I didn't really, I was never a very... Um, like performance arts based kid I didn't really do much drama I wasn't really in the school plays and stuff mm. like that um, and I think that was my way of um, 
performing, like to write something, whether it was uh, like as I grew older, I, I wrote for like the uni magazine and stuff. Mm. I wrote like reviews on gigs and stuff like that. And I think I enjoyed having my work out there when they started publishing it online or in whatever. But um, I never really channeled that into um, into like presenting until I was given the chance at Wacko this year. And it was it wasn't it wasn't a natural transition mm. at all. And it was quite difficult. What's your favourite format to write? So, do you write scripts? Do you write like, of course, you write articles. But um, you ever thought about oh. you know writing the odd book here and there? Um, when I was a kid, I always wanted to. When they were like, "What do you want to be when you grow up?" and stuff, and you don't think about any limitations in that question. You're like, "Oh, I'm going to be an astronaut or whatever." Mm. Um, mine was a, a um, an author, like a novelist, but like a best-selling one in my mind. Mm. Um, so. I've always wanted to write a book, I just don't know what it would be about. Um, I, um, when I was younger, I did used to write little stories and stuff when I was a kid. Mm. But my favorite format to write in, I don't know, it's hard to, um, it's hard to describe because for, for like, for my videos, for example, I don't write uh, everything out. I write, I write bullet points usually, like for rest of the week. Mm. I write, and I think you can sort of tell because I don't read as if I'm reading off a script, I kind of sometimes I mess up and leave it in, or sometimes mm. I like think of something on the spot. Um, so I don't know really. What's my favorite format to write in? Hmm. I don't know. That's honestly a question I can't answer. Because um, again, I, c I can definitely. Um I, I can definitely preach on the fact that again I, I did a bit of script writing um, in school when right. I thought when I thought I could be a thing and but you know people always told me yeah you know, as a you know, I'd be a great creative writer and I just told them no um, I wanted to, <laughs> always wanted to be a broadcast journalist and you know do radio and stuff so uh, it's, it's, it's always an interesting one you know how people start off because again like, um, like even, even I've interviewed stand up comedians and they started right. off in law but um, you know you, you just never know um, so again you started at what culture and uh, all that. The Jackalites also came along. Um, oh, yeah. You must have had a lot of fun filming them skits. Yeah, uh, towards the that was sort of towards the end of of um, yeah. my time at Rock Culture. Um, it was a lot of fun. However, I don't know. Like, this is nothing against the guys who were in it, like the Peter, Ben, and Jules. They're all great. Um, Peter and Ben and I are currently doing the video channel, which mm. is great uh, down in Bristol. But. Um, uh, it was fun, but at the same time, I did get a sense of like uh, um, people weren't responding to it that well because of um, my heel turn in quotation marks, <laughs> yeah. um, which I enjoyed doing. But I thought I did think at certain stages like this is supposed to be about making predictions for mm. the cardboard belt. We kind of maybe have taken this a little bit too far. Mm. Like it's gone a bit. It's gonna. It's starting to sort of. It's starting to sort of cloud the actual talking about the wrestling. Mm. But at the same time, I think it's important to have a little bit of what we did. But maybe with that bit, maybe with the Jackalites thing, maybe it was a little bit too far. I also don't think I had the acting skills to pull it off. I don't have feelings. <laughs> it, was, it was still funny as hell. Yeah, I, was, I was just crying my eyes out. Um, <laughs> especially how useless Ben and Peter were. Um, <laughs> just, just, I, I always looked at them and thought, you just go back to the gaming channel, please. Um, so let, again, and of course with uh, what culture you had WCPW. Um, I mean, being a wrestling fan and you know working on a wrestling promotion that must be a dream come true. It was. It was. It was. Um, I've got mixed feelings on WCPW because at the time when our it wasn't our idea to start it. It was our bosses at what culture, yeah. um, and they told us when we came back from uh, from Dallas the first time, and um, we said. Oh, like we all had kind of reservations about it. We thought this is a bit of a strange idea. Like you've got this because in Dallas is when we sort of realised for the first time that the channel was kind of big because we mm. saw everyone in person who was there. We saw how many people knew who we were and stuff. Mm. We thought, wow, this is actually quite big. And then they we came back and they went, right, we're starting a wrestling promotion. And we thought, why, like, why would you do that? Why would you not just concentrate on building the channel more? You know, this could be big. This could be really huge. Mm. And obviously we were, you know, the faces of it, so we wanted it that that to happen. But at the same time, um, <clears throat> WCBW gave me a chance to. I know, I know far more now about wrestling than I ever would have if it wasn't for that. I know, like I've seen wrestlers plan matches and that sort of thing, and it's fascinating. It's a very fascinating look at the wrestling business. Mm. 
Uh, and I met some great people as well. A lot of the wrestlers are really nice guys, um, especially Joe Henry, who just competed in the Commonwealth he Games. Did. He day. did. He did. He failed, but he competed. Oh, <laughs> he fa- hey. he did lose in the quarterfinals. It was embarrassing. Did you see his tweet? Yeah, I did, yeah. Where he said, my foot was on the road. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, but no, um, I met a lot of cool people. Got to, got to do little skits with people like Matt Hardy and stuff. It was crazy. Mm. So yeah, I can't begrudge them for staying up WCPW because it afforded it afforded us all the opportunity to learn loads about wrestling and mm. do some really cool things, meet some really cool people. But at the same time, I always think that was a strange decision because um, it's not cheap to run a wrestling promotion, not at all. Mm. And of course, especially, I'll... Not one, especially not one that gets cut angling and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, and of course, I watched a bit of uh, what learning the ropes, of course, with yourself and learn about yeah. you know how that. But you never get that sort of thing with WWE. It's very interesting. Um, Especially how they set up the ropes and set up, you know, how, you know, it's stuff that people don't really think about. Um, yeah. And of course, now Cultaholic. I mean, it's I interviewed uh, Mr. Pachiti uh, back in November after Survivor Series, and here we are now, just after WrestleMania, and you guys are going from strength to strength. One of the things I'm I've, I'm intrigued about when when you start off at you uh, being a YouTube personality, do you ever think? Oh God, who's actually watching? Now, of course, you said about uh, you know people in Dallas, you know, absolutely responding positively, of course, to it. But with YouTube being such a saturated and such a diverse area with KSI and and yeah, whoever, did you ever think, oh God, who's watching? Who's watching in terms of like like any is he... anyone watching? Is anyone actually engaging? Sort of thing. Oh right, um, when we started called the Holly. Well, I suppose in, in, in general. I mean, like, okay. I suppose with what, uh, with Cult Hall, I mean, it was such a huge success with the, you know, the follow on from what culture, obviously, but even when you start in, in the beginning. Um, in the beginning, I, I, um, I guess so. It, it's hard to, um, it's hard to think, like, of, of numbers on a screen in real life. Like, you can't picture that many people, really. Mm. It's hard to. Um, I sort of, sometimes think like well, it's hard to describe because again I'm always really blown away when we meet people in person at a show or whatever um, so maybe I, maybe I don't think who's watching I know I know for a fact that um, I'm more comfortable doing stuff where I'm interacting with fans with a microphone mm. than, than I am just in the studio by myself or at least I was before I improved so in that respect I think I am more conscious of people of like the number of people watching on camera than Ross is. Ross is the opposite. Ross is very good in the studio, not as not as good like face to face or whatever. Like he wouldn't do a video where he goes around interviewing fans, whereas I'd happily do. I'd be like one of my favourite types of videos to do. Mm. And I don't know if that's because if I'm when I first started, if I was first presenting, I, I would be aware like oh, there's a lot of people watching here, and I never really had the worry of like who's watching in terms of is anyone watching because the channel had already become big through the Adams' work before I was on it mm. so it was almost the opposite it was almost like oh god who's watching there's so many people watching me and I don't know what I'm doing mm. and of course I mean well, I, I, I often wonder you know doing this show yeah, how many people were actually bothering to listen to me at, at the same time but you know you can only I suppose even you would agree you can only do as much as you can and you, know, you, you almost have to wait and see what you know, how people react to it yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah. So let's go back to wrestling because I could, you know, I, I want to talk about wrestling all day long. The greatest Royal Rumble in Saudi Arabia. How conquers bonkers is it? it? Yeah, it is. It is. That's a very good way of describing it. Um, <clears throat> it's an absolutely stacked show. No, 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 no. It's not stacked. It's bonkers. I mean, let, bonkers, let's, let's 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 just beat around not, not beat around the bush here. John Cena against Triple H. Yes. Brock Lesnar against Roman Reigns in a steel cage. The Undertaker against Chris Jericho in a casket match. I mean, yeah. what on earth is going on? And still, despite all that, I am most looking forward to the 50-man one. I mean, it's, 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 it's complete madness, surely. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to it, though, horribly. <laughs> um, it's a bit it's a bit, indul- it's a bit excessive, a little bit. Um, I'm just worried that they're going to just have not pulled the trigger on a lot of storylines of Mania because they wanted to do it in Saudi Arabia because of like money money reasons mm. I, do you think that the universal title will change hands? do you know what I, um, I, I don't even know I think I think Brock Lesnar is an interesting one 
I think <laughs> with everything that Paul Heyman said and everyone believed it and then he signs again uh, I mean <laughs> I'm sure if he loses they'll get the same I mean I don't know what Brock is up to um, no. no I think nobody knows except for Brock Lesnar um, I, I think the greatest analogy from Paul Heyman was um, what was it he, he feeds the, um, the chickens then he does the hay and all that I just think well Okay, what? Well, what? Well, only you could get away with saying that. Um, yeah. But again, would you say it's the cr- craziest pay per view ever? I mean, we, we had the Forty Man Royal Rumble in 2011. Um, but also, what I can't understand is there's nothing on the line at the Greatest Royal Rumble. At least with a Royal Rumble, there's the WrestleMania. But it, 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 does that not confuse you in the same way that it does for me? It does. It does confuse me. I think they'll. Yeah. I don't know, maybe they'll announce something closer to the time, like in the weeks beforehand, but we're getting close now, aren't we? It's yes. only like a couple of weeks away. Um, I don't know. I think... I wouldn't be surprised if the winner of the Rumble, like the next week on Raw or SmackDown or whatever, they were like... They were talking to the GM, and the GM came out and was like, oh, you've got a title shot now because of that. But I don't know if they'll mention it at the show, mm. because they won the Greatest Royal Rumble... And like, they want that to seem like the be all and end all. It's the greatest Royal Rumble. So mm. I don't know if I don't know if they've deliberately avoided naming a prize for the winner of the Rumble just so that for Saudi Arabia that show seems like the the WrestleMania, like it's the end. Like they've won the greatest Royal Rumble. That's it. What more do you need? Yeah. I, I don't know. It's very strange. I, I can't wait for it. Though. One blessing, of course, it's at 5 p.m. Uh, our time, which is an absolute blessing, and I have to stay up till 1 o'clock in the morning. Um, but, of course, you are the king of uh, New Japan. You are a massive fan of uh, the Japanese wrestling, which, of course, is at 8 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Interesting question. How well do you sleep when you're watching a WWE uh, pay-per-view in comparison to a New Japan one? Um, WWE ones are normally... Right, so... I, I still have a bit of a messed up body clock from this past week with like Wrestlemania and uh, NXT and Raw mm. and stuff like that um, <clears throat> the New Japan ones I think are comparatively lovely like I just watch them <laughs> like if it's not one that we're reacting to I can just watch it at work or I can like watch it like I can watch it well the, the thing with New Japan as well is I don't feel as much pressure to watch it live so even if I do feel a bit tired when it's on mm. if it's not one we're reacting to I'll just watch it a bit later mm. because um, often their shows aren't really as you don't need to know what's happened immediately you can get away with watching it a little bit later on mm-hmm. with WWE pay-per-views we kind of need to know what's happened straight away to do news and all that sort of stuff so it kind of get a little bit disruptive but luckily <clears throat> I'm in the position where um, our hours in the office aren't particularly rigid as long as we're all working hard and we're all in for the equivalent of like nine to five then we all trust each other to you know come in whenever work your hours if you're if you've been up late watching something then come in later it's fine as long as you like do your work and mm. you know make up the time but um i think that's that's a good thing about the company now that it started is that we're all we've all learned that we can trust each other to like to work hard and to like be sensible and not, you know, take the Mickey. Mm. If you had to, if you had to pick one to to watch for the rest of your life, would it be New Japan or WWE? Um, WWE, but that's like it would be WWE because I I feel I feel really boring saying that answer. I was, <laughs> did you want me to say the other one? Well, I I, I, I think. Like I've never seen someone so passionate about New Japan. Now, don't get me wrong. Before I started watching what culture and, and culture, of course, I think eighty-five percent of, of um, your fans hadn't heard of New Japan. But again, engaging it and, and learning from you know, especially from uh, you doing the roundup and whatnot. I, I mean, it, it, it's engaging. Um, so I suppose I would have thought you'd have at least given some consideration to New Japan, considering how oh, passionate you are about it, especially with the likes of you know, Naito and Kenny Omega and yeah. You know, I mean, they're all... I mean, it's really cool. And I think New Japan last year was the best... where you could find the best wrestling in the world. This year, I think it might be NXT, if we can count that as a separate mm. entity. But um, I just... You can't really get away from the fact that WWE is the, the big one, isn't it? It's the... the I don't know if the be-all and end-all, but it's the biggest promotion. It's the... Everyone tunes in for WrestleMania and stuff. And I just wouldn't want to miss out on a big WWE moment. And I think, as well, that... When it's good, WWE, there's nothing like it. You know, 
it's just that New Japan's far more consistent when it comes to match quality. Hmm. Um, oh, you've really got me thinking about that now. I'm still going to stick with WWE, but I'd be very sad never to watch New Japan again because they've got some of the best wrestlers in the world. Hmm. I, I mean, you, you can't dispute that. Um, here's an interesting one. The UK presence in WWE. Now, we've had the UK tournament last January. We've got another one coming up. Do you think there'll be a, a, a huge pay per view coming over to the UK soon? Like again, you, you, you'd think with the Saudi Arabia choice, you'd think perhaps there'd be a, a, an event such as a, a, a spectacle coming over to the UK. Do you think that'll ever happen? Um, I hope so. I hope that the UK tournament and stuff isn't just like that's it for the UK. I hope that it's building to something. Um. Well, of course they've got uh, they've got ICW and the relations are there in progress and and in progress, yes, yeah, they've got that. I hope so. I think it it. I think even if they're not intentionally building to something, I think the strength of the scene in the UK right now and the passion of the UK fans and like I see more and more and more talk these days about when there another big pay per view coming to the UK. When and I think that'll just build and build and build until eventually they realise like well we have to now. Mm. Like it's all been built into it. So I I don't know if they're planning to build to it now, but. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw maybe maybe not a big four pay per view unless they brought SummerSlam back, but I don't think they will. Um, I think we'll see like a a pay per view, but not a big four one. And I think I think it'll be in London, sadly, so I have to get a train. But I think I think that's what we'll see. Quick fire questions: Favorite wrestler of all time? Triple H. In, it, seriously. I mean, he was, my, he, was my guy, he was my guy when I was a kid. He was my guy. Like he's, he's not the best of all time, but he's my favorite of all time. I love Triple H. Favorite pay per view of all time? Um, WrestleMania Seventeen. You mean X Seven? Let's let's not um, get into that argument anymore. Um, worst pay per view you've ever seen? Probably. Oh, it's a cliched answer, but probably December to December. Ooh, that's an interest. See, I, I, that should have been a better pay per view. Yeah, in yeah, my yeah. opinion, the opening tag match is good. Yeah, and it's, again, it's you think of of a pre PG era ECW elimination chamber with weapons. You think they'd bleed like pigs, but yeah, such a shame. Yeah, but we've got we've got Bobby Lashley back. I mean, that's we have got Bobby Lashley. It's, it's true right um, I did a quiz with uh, Mr. Pacitti, uh when yeah. he was on he, he got two out of five I hope you didn't listen to that oh no no I did uh, not listen to it good um, I'm going to play for you five WWE themes you have to tell me who they are let's see how Mr. Oh, Jobber no. does uh, oh, no. are you ready yes here's the first one okay Um, do I just guess now? Yeah, guess whenever. Oh, no. Um, I'll go with, um, Lancel. Incorrect. Right era, Paul London. Oh. Okay. I, I, what, again, a great superstar back in the day. He used to always leg it down to the ring. And then, yeah, of course, he, he got absolutely decked, um, as Scott Brown would say. And he just absolutely decked him in 2005 against Snitsky, do you remember? Yeah, the World Rumble, yeah. Here's the next one. The World Wrestling Federation for over 50 years. I hate YouTube. <laughs> I just don't know that one. I just don't know. I'm just going to guess. That's the whole point of quizzes. You guess. Cheer you on, Yan. Who knows? Vir- well, everyone's favourite slave, Virgil. No way. That was Virgil. That that that, that did that did catch out, um, uh, Mister Pacitti. He thought that was Brutus well, he above. Got, he got four London. No, he didn't. That he got um he got the well. I'm not going to tell you what he got and when he right, got okay, it. Right. Here's the next one. Oh, come on. Oh, Bobby Cannon. Wrong. <laughs> uh, 
I get, no, no, roughly same area. Chuck Palumbo. Oh. Well, I was thinking of... Um, I was thinking of... Uh, what's he called, man? Sean O'Hare. But that would have also been the wrong answer. But it, I would I would have given you half a point if you said... Uh, Sean, well, they, they, were a ta- they were a good tag team. Palumbo and O'Hare. Yeah. Part of the That's Smackdown true. scene. Here's the next one. You should be able to get this one. You should, if you don't, then... What, you said, sorry, you said I should be able to get this one? Yes. Why? Why is that? Okay. Um, Rico. Uh, Seriously? Why, what's, what's, who is it? Tell me. I'm going to... It's the Mean Street Posse. No, see, right. No, see. I got into wrestling in 2000. The Mean Street Posse was slowly dying away. But there was... Oh... They were great. Pete Gass no, I've and... Seen, I've, seen, I've seen them get involved with Shane McMahon's matches and stuff, and I've seen them in the... Weren't they in the big hardcore... They were. ...scramble at WrestleMania 16, they were. 2000. Yeah. But I don't think I've seen them make an entrance, or if I have, then that song hasn't quite stuck in my head. I'm very embarrassed right now. Yeah. I mean, it, it, Pachiti did get that one um, quite, oh, yeah, quite easily. Right, final one. WWE Hall of Fame as these guys. Okay. I'm waiting for it to kick in. Is this the, is this the song? There we go. Oh, the free birds. There we go. The fabulous free birds. Bad streak. Oh. Yes, you finally got one. <laughs> I mean... Oh, oh dear. Yeah. You, you can go to Pachiti tomorrow morning and think, yeah, do you that quick? I got one. Um... Yeah, that that's embarrassing. <laughs> but yeah, you know, I, I suppose you don't make they don't make them anymore with Jim Johnson and you know the crew out over there. What, what what would you say is your favorite WWE theme of all time? Oh, um, Austin's is up there, obviously. Um, the Rocks, Triple H's, all the big Attitude Era ones. I really mm. like because they just they just summed up the character so well and enhanced it as they were coming down to the ring. Um, I really like I really like Edges. Um, mm. By Alderbridge on this day and all that. I um, see clearly. Yeah, oh, exactly. yeah. It gets, it's really it's a fiery up song. Mm. Um, and I also like uh, some of the modern day ones. They've really sort of hit a renaissance period of theme tunes. AJ Styles is great. Nakamura's is great. Mm. Bobby Roode's oh. was certainly great at the start until people started to get a little bit bored of it. Yeah, I, I, I'm feeling that as well. I think the glorious bit is it's all about Rusev, isn't it? Rusev Day yeah. is forever. Um, <laughs> um, but then who knows what's going on with him and the WWE at the moment. Um, but, but I suppose this, this is the best thing about you. I hang on every your every word. And do you know what? It's been an honour having you on my show and talking to quite possibly the... the the, almost the brains of uh, Cultaholic. Um, oh, well, after I've got the quiz wrong. But thank you very much. No, one one final the question. What, what, where do you see yourself going in the future? Do you see yourself, um, again, writing more articles, maybe writing a book like Lompierre has oh, done? Maybe, maybe. Because, I mean, as I said it before, it's something that I wanted to do as a kid. Um, I don't know. At the minute, I'm solely concentrated on, you know, growing Cultaholic, hopefully getting out to WrestleMania next year and seeing where it goes from there. Um... And then once it's grown, and once we're like all happy with how it's going, and we're relaxed a little bit, maybe I'll write something then. But I don't know what it would be. I have to think of it first. But um, I've never been one to have too many clear future plans, and it's, it's luckily worked out so far. So hopefully, I'll continue to do so. Well, do you know what? Again, like I said, it's been an absolute honour and a privilege. And it's been an honour to be on it. Thank you very much. And again, the one, the only, Jackie King. Uh, Thank there. you very much, Lucy.